Today we are going to continue with our Bible reading. But before we read, shall we just have a moment of prayer? Father, we are asking that you will open our eyes of understanding as we read your word today. We are asking that relevant passages that really speak to our present needs and problems, spiritually and physically and materially, you will impress upon our hearts. Be with us, enlighten us, instruct us, teach us as we read together now. In Jesus' name, I pray. We'll continue with the reading now. Habakkuk, chapter 2. Habakkuk, chapter 2. In the seventh month, in the one and twentieth day of the month, came the word of the Lord by the prophet Haggai, saying, Speak now to Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, governor of Judah, and to Joshua, the son of Josedek, the high priest, and to the residue of the people, saying, Who is left among you that saw this house in her first glory? And how do ye see it now? Is it not in your eyes, in comparison of it, as nothing? Yet now be strong, O Zerubbabel, saith the Lord, and be strong, O Joshua, son of Josedek, the high priest, and be strong, O ye people of the land, saith the Lord, and work. For I am with you, saith the Lord of hosts. According to the word that I covenanted with you when ye came out of Egypt, so my spirit remaineth among you. Fear ye not. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, Yet once it is a little while, and I will shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land, and I will shake all nations, and the desire of all nations shall come, and I will fill this house with glory, saith the Lord of hosts. The silver is mine, and the gold is mine, saith the Lord of hosts. The glory of this latter house shall be greater than of the former, saith the Lord of hosts. And in this place will I give peace, saith the Lord of hosts. In the four and twentieth day of the ninth month, in the second year of Darius, came the word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Ask now the priests concerning the law, saying, If one pay a holy flesh in the skirt of his garment, and with his skirt touch bread, or pottage, or wine, or oil, or any meat, shall it be holy? And the priests answered and said, No. Then said Haggai, If one that is unclean by a dead body touch any of these, shall it be unclean? And the priests answered and said, It shall be unclean. Then answered Haggai and said, So is this people, and so is this nation before me, saith the Lord. And so is every work of their hands, and that which they offer there is unclean. And now I pray you, consider from this day and upward, from before a stone was laid upon a stone in the temple of the Lord. Since those days were, when one came to an heap of twenty measures, there were but ten. When one came to the press fat, for to draw out fifty vessels out of the press, there were but twenty. I smote you with blasting, and with mildew, and with hail in all the lights of your hands. Yet ye turned not to me, saith the Lord. Consider now from this day and upward, from the four and twentieth day of the ninth month, even from the day that the foundation of the Lord's temple was laid, consider it. Is the seed yet in the barn? Yea, as yet the vine and the fig tree and the pomegranate and the olive tree hath not brought forth. From this day will I bless you. And again the word of the Lord came unto Haggai in the four and twentieth day of the month, saying, Speak to Zerubbabel, governor of Judah, saying, I will shake the heavens and the earth, and I will overthrow the throne of kingdoms, and I will destroy the strength of the kingdoms of the heathen, and I will overthrow the chariots and those that ride in them, and the horses and their riders shall come down, every one by the sword of his brother. In that day, saith the Lord of hosts, will I take thee, O Zerubbabel, my servant, the son of Shealtiel, saith the Lord, and will make thee as a signet, for I have chosen thee, saith the Lord of hosts. The End of Haggai Zechariah Chapter 1 in the eighth month, in the second year of Darius, came the word of the Lord unto Zechariah, the son of Berechiah, the son of Iddo, the prophet, saying, The Lord hath been sore pleased with your fathers. 
Therefore say thou unto them, Thus saith the Lord of hosts. Turn ye unto me, saith the Lord of hosts, and I will turn unto you, saith the Lord of hosts. Be ye not as your fathers, unto whom the former prophets have cried, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Turn ye now from your evil ways and from your evil doings. But they did not hear, nor hearken unto me, saith the Lord. Your fathers, where are they? And the prophets, do they live forever? But my words and my statutes, which I commanded my servants, the prophets, did they not take hold of your fathers? And they returned and said, Like as the Lord of hosts thought to do unto us, according to our ways and according to our doings, so hath he dealt with us. Upon the four and twentieth day of the eleventh month, which is the month Sebat, in the second year of Darius, came the word of the Lord unto Zechariah, the son of Berechiah, the son of Iddo, the prophet, saying, I saw by night, and behold, a man riding upon a red horse, and he stood among the myrtle trees that were in the bottom, and behind him were their red horses, speckled and white. Then said I, O my Lord, what are these? And the angel that talked with me said unto me, I will show thee what these be. And the man that stood among the myrtle trees answered and said, These are they whom the Lord hath sent to walk to and fro through the earth. And they answered the angel of the Lord that stood among the myrtle trees, and said, We have walked to and fro through the earth, and behold, all the earth sitteth still and is at rest. And the angel of the Lord answered and said, O Lord of hosts, how long wilt thou not have mercy on Jerusalem and on the cities of Judah, against which thou hast had indignation these threescore and ten years? And the Lord answered the angel that talked with me with good words and comfortable words. So the angel that communed with me said unto me, Cry thou, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, I am jealous for Jerusalem and for Zion with a great jealousy, and I am very sore displeased with the heathen that are at ease. For I was but a little displeased, and they helped forward the affliction. Therefore thus saith the Lord, I am returned to Jerusalem with mercies. My house shall be built in it, saith the Lord of hosts, and a line shall be stretched forth upon Jerusalem. Cry yet, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, My cities through prosperity shall yet be spread abroad, and the Lord shall yet comfort Zion, and shall yet choose Jerusalem. Then lifted I up mine eyes, and saw, and behold, four horns. And I said unto the angel that talked with me, What be these? And he answered me, These are the horns which have scattered Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem. And the Lord showed me four carpenters. Then said I, what come these to do? And he spake, saying, These are the horns which have scattered Judah, so that no man did lift up his head. But these are come to fray them, to cast out the horns of the Gentiles, which lifted up their horn over the land of Judah to scatter it. You have just listened to the Bible reading, and we need to take whatever we have learned to the Lord in prayer. Will you all rise up, please? Talk to the Lord in prayer. You've seen a commandment, a warning, an example, an instruction to obey, a promise to claim. Pray for grace that you will do as you have learned in the word of God. In Jesus' name we pray. You are our Deliverance from my enemy, yes, from my enemy. to God. 
God's family. That's why His blood flows through my veins. You speed a sea. You speed a sea so I can walk right through. My fears are dry. My fears are dry. My bed gone. And you rescued me. dominion over you. By his stripes we are here. Oh resist the devil, he will flee from you. Child of God. I am a child of God. I'm a happy child of God. I am a child of
Praise the Lord. Uh uh. What kind of hallelujah is that? I said, Praise the Lord. You got it. You get your miracle. The power of God is here tonight. And you will never remain the same in Jesus' name. The rain of miracle will be falling right there. I'll get my own. Say that very well. The Lord confirm that in your life in Jesus' name. Father, we well, thank you tonight and bless your name. We know that you are here in love, in mercy, in compassion, and power for everyone. We're asking, Lord, tonight, you bless everyone beyond their expectation in Jesus' name. And we're asking, Lord, that tonight will be the night when you touch and transform every life. And as we hear your word talking about Christ as Savior, Christ, our sacrifice, and Christ, the final one that comes to roll away our problem. We pray that by faith, we touch you tonight in Jesus' name. And we pray, Lord, every life will turn around for the better. Take hold of everyone and use your power to descend on everything around us so that your blessing will be ours in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray that heaven will say amen to all our requests. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. God bless you. You can sit down in great expectation tonight because tonight is your night of supernatural freedom. Tonight we're looking at John chapter 1, reading from verse 29. John chapter 1, reading from verse 29. The next day John said, Jesus come in unto him and said, Behold the Lamb. Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. He operates everywhere in the world, here and there. Online, on television, on radio, any continent you, you are, any country you are, any congregation you are now, or as an individual you are linking up, he is the Lamb of God that takes away, takes away, takes away all the sin of everyone in the world and as you come tonight and as you are there tonight and you link up and connect with the lord he'll take all your sin away i thought you'll say good amen and all the consequences of sin all the sickness all the satanic affliction, every sin that is the offshoot and the fruit and the consequence of our sin, the Lord will take everything away from your life tonight as you believe on the Lord in Jesus' name. Behold, behold, behold the Lamb of God. The Lamb of God, not the Lamb of man, chosen by man and the man, man telling him, you can't do this, you can't do this. This is the Lamb of the Almighty God, the God that so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever, whosoever in the whole wide world believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. And you're invited tonight to behold by faith, to look by faith, and to hold by faith that Lamb of God who takes away the sin and the consequence of sin all over the world. We're told in First John chapter 3 verse 5, First John chapter 3 verse 5, and ye know that he was manifested, that means he came just for one purpose. He came just for one reason. And as you come for the same purpose that Christ came, that this is what he came to do. And you also come and you want him to do that same thing in your life. It says we know that he Christ, 
He the Savior. He the Lamb of God was manifested to take away our sin. Your sin. Everyone's sin all over the world. That's why Christ came. And tonight, the purpose of his coming will be fulfilled in your life. He will set you free. It will deliver you. It will take all those sins connected with evil. It will take everything away from your life, from your soul, your spirit, your body, tonight in Jesus' name. And then it says, in him is no sin. In him is no sin. He never did anything wrong. Why then did he suffer? He suffered for you. He died for you. He died so that you come to the life of Christ because he was manifested. He was revealed. He came to this world to take away your sin because in him is no sin. That's a word that I need to throw across to you there is the word substitution. Substitution, when they should have carried a particular load, and that load will overwhelm you, overweigh you, and it will crush you. And that person said, I'll carry that for you. It becomes your substitute. What you should have done, which you couldn't do, another person has come to do it for you. So tonight, I'm talking on the substitutionary lamp for our supernatural freedom. Christ became your substitute to carry the load you couldn't carry, to bear the punishment you couldn't bear, and to suffer in a way that you couldn't suffer for your sin is the Lamb of God that came as Savior, came as substitute, came as the final sacrifice for your sin. The substitutionary lamb for our supernatural freedom. I have freedom tonight. I said you have freedom tonight. Be confirmed in your life in Jesus' name. The three things we're looking at. Number one, behold the heavenly Lamb of God. Behold the heavenly Lamb of God. He came from heaven. It's not an earthly lamb. Every other lamb that had been sacrificed, whether in Egypt, on that day they came out of Egypt, or any other time on the altar of the children of Israel, it was an earthly lamb born in the world, made in the world, sacrificed in the world. But this lamb came from heaven and the father spoke from heaven. This is my beloved son. He came from heaven in whom I am well pleased beholding the heavenly lamb of God. Point number two, believing the healing Lord of all goodness is full of goodness. And it helps everyone. It heals everyone. It delivers everyone. There's no reason for him to be partial. Why? He came for the whole world. He came to heal. He came to save. He came to help the whole world. And so you believe the healing Lord of all goodness. Now num number three is beginning the honorable life of grace. Tonight you are going to begin a new life. I said tonight you are going to begin a new life. Honorable life. The grace of God made available through Christ. That grace is coming to you tonight. And you begin a good life, honorable life, a, a straightforward life, honest life, honorable life of grace. One, two, three, you begin. Number one, 
that's beholding the heavenly Lamb of God. Again, I'm going to read to you from John chapter 1, from verse 36. John chapter 1, verse 36. And looking upon Jesus as he walks, it says, Behold the Lamb of God. Can I tell you something now? That this sentence, Behold the Lamb of God. That's the whole career of John the Baptist. Think about it, person. He was sent into the world. He was born and he lived for just one thing, to declare to the world, Behold the Lamb of God. That statement must be so important that one person, the forerunner of Christ, had to be born into the world to say, to declare just one thing. And once he declared that, his ministry was fulfilled. He came to reveal and to tell you that this is the Lamb, the Lamb that will take your sins away, the Lamb that will give you forgiveness, the Lamb that will give you freedom, the Lamb that will make you to be a reconciled unto God. And he has now done, he has effected his ministry as he tells you, behold the Lamb. And if you're going to respond to the ministry of such a man, what he said is very simple. Number one, he shows the lamb to take away all our sin. Number two, it shows that he is of God, appointed by God. He is of God and the only one that God has affirmed that he is the one that has the power authority to take away all your sin and when it takes that sin away it will no more be there because it is taken away and it says all you have to do is behold that he is with the eyes of faith with the mind of faith of the heart of faith you look on him and you see there's no other way there's no other plan and there is all, no other means to have all my sins taken away taken away from my heart taken away from my habit taken away from my lifestyle i behold the lamb of god and look at that in verse 30 in verse 37 it says and the two disciples heard him speak and they followed Jesus. When you hear, you must act on the message. When those disciples that had been with John, they heard. They didn't say, well, were any disciples of John? Well, we're already in religion. They knew that this was the climax of the ministry of John. And he had declared, behold the Lamb. And those two, immediately, they responded like you are going to respond tonight. When you hear, look at the Lamb. Behold him. Believe him. Accept him, and he is the one that has the power, has the authority, and he has the approval of God in heaven that he and he alone will take away your sin, take away the consequence of sin. All the punishment you should have borne, he takes that away, he takes away the corruption of sin. He cleanses you, he purges you, he takes away everything that you are not in possession of them anymore. The two disciples followed after Christ in verse 38 it says in verse 38 then Jesus turned and saw them following you want him to see you tonight that yes Lord I'm here I've decided to follow Jesus no turning back no turning back I have heard you are the lamb I have heard you are the savior I've heard you are the redeemer you look at your life there is still sin there 
There's still that habit, bad habit there. There is that thing that propels you and draws you and drives you to do evil. And you know that the sin will be recognized and punished by God. And there's only one way you can have forgiveness and freedom and salvation. And it's by believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. And therefore you do as these two disciples come and you say, Lord, I am following. And they will see you following tonight. I said they will see you following tonight. And say unto them, what? Seek ye. What are you looking for? You're looking for the salvation that comes from him, the Lamb of God. You're looking for the freedom, for the forgiveness that comes from him, the Lamb of God. You're looking for the power, the authority, and the strength, and the grace to live a different life, a saved life, and a life above all the levels of sinfulness you have been living before what seek ye if you have some you know you come here if you are not seeking anything i just came those who just came and they are not expecting to have or receive anything what are they going to have when they just went to the market only to look around and to go back but because you're seeking for something you're looking for something you're asking for something you're desiring something in your heart what seek ye will seek forgiveness will seek freedom we seek salvation. We seek the taking away of our sin. If that's what you are seeking, you'll get it tonight. Yeah. I get it tonight. Yeah. And you will not go back home empty-hearted in Jesus' name. Yeah. Hey, look at Isaiah chapter 45 and verse 22. Isaiah chapter 45 reading from verse 22 look unto me look unto me you've been looking this way and that way and the lord is saying there's no victory there there's no salvation there you look to the hills and say that is your god there's no salvation there you look to the river and see that will bring deliverance to you there's no salvation there you look to rituals and ceremonies of religion and the lord is saying there's no salvation there you look at the human effort what i can do by myself all the effort i can make there's no salvation in the effort you make by yourself you look at your determination this thing i will conquer it you cannot conquer sin by human determination you look at tradition here is the tradition our forefathers gave us and our forefathers by that tradition they did not overcome sin or the consequence of sin or the punishment of sin and what they have handed over to us somebody handed over to them somebody else handed over that one to the other people generation to generation and we are being a generation all over the world of sinful people helpless people powerless people that's why it says all have sinned what does that mean all who got that same tradition you have got before you and were passing that tradition on those ceremonies on those rituals on all have sinned and come short of the glory of god but as you have looked this way and that way thinking you have salvation there now you look in the right direction and it says look unto me and be ye saved as you look to the lord tonight you'll be saved he'll take all the sin away he'll take all the guilt away he'll take all the condemnation away look unto me and be ye saved all the ends of the earth look at that all the ends of the earth all the ends of the earth anyone anywhere wherever you are whatever you have done the only way to have the salvation of the lord is look to the lamb 
that God himself has given. He said, for I am God and there is none else. Number one, you behold the heavenly Lamb of God and thereby salvation will come. Thereby forgiveness will come. Thereby freedom will come. Thereby the joy of salvation and the assurance that heaven now has recorded your name as a saved soul. All that will come because you behold the heavenly lamb of God. Number two, number two is believing the healing Lord of all goodness. Believing. When we believe that faith will pass that healing virtue into your body. If you are blind, as you believe tonight, those blind eyes will open. If you are lame, as you believe him tonight, that same miracle will happen unto you. Believe the healing Lord of all goodness. Can I explain that to you? He is Lord. He is in charge. He controls everything. All those things that bother you. All those things that weaken you, all those things that make you paralyzed, impotent, incompetent, and you are just there and you cannot do anything by yourself. He is the Lord in charge, in control, and he will take all those sicknesses away from your life tonight. Say, I believe. Say that again. I believe. Look at Mark chapter 5, verse 36. Mark chapter 5, we're reading from verse 36. It says, as soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, it says to the ruler of the synagogue, be not afraid, only believe. Somebody had come to call Jesus. He will heal the daughter, the only daughter he had. And as Christ was going with the man to go and heal the daughter, they brought information. They said, now the problem is beyond solution. Now, the challenge you have with your daughter has come to a human final end. They were saying, there's nothing any man could do now. Everything has come to a final end. But you know, Christ is not any lamb, any, any man. And Christ is not any lamb. And Christ is not any leader. It's unique. What other people cannot do, the Lord will do it in your life. What you might have given up as if this will not work because we've come to the final end. The Lord will penetrate into your life tonight. That thing people said, no man can do this. The one that is greater than all men is going to do it. He's going to affirm it. He's going to kill you. And he's going to destroy every work of the devil in your life tonight in Jesus' name. That's why the Lord said, remember, he is the healing Lord. Of all goodness, all goodness resides in him. The goodness that will heal, the goodness that will heal, the goodness that will deliver, the goodness that will set you free, the goodness that will perform miracle in your life. Everything resides in him. That's why he says, be not afraid. Be not afraid that this sickness will take your life. It will not take your life. Be not afraid that this affliction will swallow you up. 
it will not swallow you up be not afraid that it kills so and so it kills such and such and the next one what can i do now god in christ has done everything for you and tonight as you look up to the lord and you are not afraid that their sickness will continue the power of the lord and the healing virtue of the lord will come into your life tonight it will set you free yeah. where are you there set you free free from sickness I'm free from affliction. I'm free from all those demons that are harassing your life. Tonight, be not afraid. Only believe. And that faith will work in your life in Jesus' name. Acts chapter 10. I'm reading from verse 38. Acts chapter 10. And we're reading from verse 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. When the Father sent Christ, his only begotten Son, Jesus, into the world, he anointed him to do what he has sent him to do. He empowered him to do what the heavenly father wanted him to do he equipped him with all the power of the holy ghost and that power works in his life that's the reason why everywhere he went the lame started walking everywhere he went the blind saw everywhere he went miracles took place he demonstrated the majesty and the glory of the power of God beyond description. Why? Because the Father who sent him, who appointed him, also equipped him and empowered him. And today, that power is here. And it's by your side there. Jesus said, where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of them. And the Lord is by your side there. Where is he? I said, where is Jesus tonight? The healer, where is he tonight? The deliverer, where is he tonight? And we really mean that it will do the miraculous in your life. Yeah. How God, the God of heaven, the creator of the heavens and the earth, the one that cannot fail, and the one that has all power, the faithful God, God of Nazareth, with the Holy Ghost, and with power. That power was for your sake. Yeah. That power was to heal you and to deliver you and to set you free and the father in heaven faithful he has anointed him of the holy ghost and he went about doing good never does evil every evil thing that satan has done when christ gets to you he reverses that evil thing he removes that evil thing because he came not to do evil he came to reverse he came to remove all the evil things that evil powers have done in your life congratulations you are here tonight it will do good in your life he went about doing good healing all healing all healing all no exception all whatever the description of your sickness healing all and whatever place you come from healing all because that's the universal goodness that he brought no discrimination and no partiality the man the woman the boy the girl the old the young he will heal you tonight 
because he is the same yesterday and today and forever healing all that were oppressed of the devil oppressed of the devil god the father never oppresses anyone if there's any oppression there is coming from the devil and christ came so that he will destroy all the works of the devil in your body in your mind in your brain in your heart in your life christ will do the good thing tonight and it will destroy the works of the devil because it says because for God was with him. God was with him. And God walks with him. And God operates with him. And God does marvelous, miraculous, majestic things with him. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth or the Holy Ghost, our power who went about doing good as he goes about tonight doing good i said doing good i said doing good healing and delivering and setting free and breaking the yoke in your life and sending those demons sending them packing out of your life in jesus name as god was with him he is still even now with God, and God is still with him. Number one is to behold the heavenly Lamb of God. Number two is to believe the healing Lord of all goodness. Now, when will that salvation begin in your life? When will that healing come into your life? And when will that miracle enter into your body, into your life? It is now. I come to number three now. Point number three, beginning the honorable life of grace. The honorable life of grace. Before we behold the Lamb. Before we believe the Lord will live dishonorable lives of disgrace, of shame, of degradation. But as we realize that all the effort we make, all the power we have, all the trying we're trying to do cannot take away that life dishonorable and disgraceful and now we turn to the Lord as you turn to the Lord it will be the beginning of our honorable life of grace in your life grace is the gift of God that he gives to us without paying for it without shedding tears for it and without human effort for it once there is human effort and you can say i got this because i tried it's no more grace it's the reward of your effort but when you come and you say nothing in my hands i bring simply to the cross i cling then is blood cleanses you free of charge without saying i paid that i did that i tried that i endeavored that all you have is works if that is what you are saying that i paid for this but when you come and there's nothing you have done and you depend only of what Christ has done on the cross at Calvary and you look to him and you understand grace has accomplished this and is free of charge for me because Christ paid it all at Calvary Christ paid it all with his death Christ paid it all with that final sacrifice when he said, it 
is finished. Christ paid it all. And salvation becomes yours because of what Christ has done. Beginning the honorable life of grace. In Ephesians chapter 2, reading from verse 5. Ephesians chapter 2, reading from verse 5. Even when we were dead in sins, terrible, was so deep in sin, entrenched in sin. Sin was in our hearts, in our lives, in our habits, in our disposition, in our desires, dead in sin, buried in sin, was swimming in the ocean of sin, was drowning because of the sinful practices of our lives. If we're totally drowned, or have been totally dead, or have gone to the other side, and that is the darkness forever and ever, hellfire forever and ever. And at that time, we heard of the heavenly love of God that takes away the sin of everyone. We were dead in sin. He has quickened us together with Christ by grace ye are saved by the free gift of God ye are saved by the death of Christ on the cross of Calvary ye are saved and by believing on the Lord that took away all your sins by grace ye are saved look at verse 8 there in verse 8 it says for by grace it's still reminding us that it is not your human effort it is not your human self-righteousness it is not by your sin I married this, I've done this, I've done this, I've done that. Look at my record. My record shows that I have been trying my best every time. Your best cannot reach out and get salvation without repentance and faith in the Lord. It says, for by grace are you saved through faith. You believe on the Lord and then you are saved. You come, you say, Lord, this is what I depend on. And the only thing I depend on is what Christ, the heavenly Lamb of God, has done for me. And I come to receive that salvation on the basis of the perfect substitutionary atonement of Christ for me. It says, for by grace... Are you saved through faith? It says, and that not of yourselves, that not of your effort, that not of your human endeavor, that not of your human works, that not of I'm better than so and so. I'm higher than so and so. I have done this which others have not done. It says, not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. And the gift of God is salvation. Will come to you today. The gift of God in healing will come to you today. And the gift of God in deliverance will come to you today. And the Lord will do everything good. Everything saving. Everyone, everything healing. Everything delivering. He'll do it in your life today in Jesus' name. Who can have this salvation of the lord now that christ has paid it and he paid it all for all he paid everything he ought to pay for everyone on the face of the earth in every generation in titus chapter 2 we're looking at verse 11 in titus chapter 2 verse 11 for the grace of God that bringeth salvation. You see that? The grace of God, the gift of God, the, 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 the outcome of what Christ did 
on the cross of Calvary, that grace that gives that outcome of the sacrifice of Christ for the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men. Has appeared to all men. Has appeared to everyone. Is appearing to you now. Is coming to you now. And as you say, I behold that. I can see that. Christ died for me. I see that in my mind's eye. I see that with faith in my heart. It will catch up on you there. And tonight you'll be saved. I said tonight you'll be saved because that salvation or grace bringing that salvation has appeared to all men. Verse 12, in verse 12, teaching us that denying ungodliness, you see, because Christ has come to save me, I turn away from every form of of sin, every form of ungodliness, every form of private evil sin because that grace when it comes, it makes us to deny ungodliness and worldly laws, worldly, worldly desires and if ungodliness now knocks at the door, we we'll say who is there knocking at the door at my door and the voice says I'm your old habit and the old ungodliness and the old evil things we used to do together. Oh, you see, I've closed the door to that. I say no to that now. I deny that now. And no ungodliness or righteousness, evil habit will remain in your life in Jesus' name. It says that grace that brings salvation appearing to all men now teaches us that denying ungodliness and worldly laws we should live soberly righteously and godly in this present world it's yours tonight say it's mine tonight it's yours tonight the Lord will give you abundance of grace tonight in Psalm 84 reading from verse 11 Psalm 84 we're looking at verse 11 for the Lord God is a son and a shield think about that the Lord God is a son and a shield as the sun shines from the sky it shines upon everyone and it's an illustration for us that the Lord who gives us the sunshine as well as the cloud that shields us from the heat of the sun the same way as he gives us everyone without exception the sun to dry what we need to dry up and the shield the clouds that covers us overshadows us everyone without exception the same thing the grace of God the salvation of God the healing of God is made available to everyone and then it says the Lord will give grace and glory the Lord will give grace and glory the grace of God will come to you tonight the glory of God will shine forth in your life tonight in Jesus name no good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly no good thing as you come to the Lord he'll give you the grace and the power the strength to not begin to walk uprightly and from the beginning of that journey of faith walking uprightly no good thing will be withheld from you Salvation is a good thing. It will not be withheld from you. Healing is a good thing. It will not be withheld from you. And deliverance is a good thing. Answers to prayer is a good thing. It will not be withheld from you. You have the goodness of the Lord in salvation tonight. In healing tonight. In deliverance tonight. And you have that goodness of the Lord in 
mighty, mighty miracles upon your life tonight in Jesus' name. Because the Lord God is a son and he is a shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. He will give. Not that he may give. He's always giving and he's going to do that and he's going to give you that grace and the glory that comes with the salvation tonight. It is mine. I said it is mine. It is yours in Jesus' name. Whosoever will call on the name of the Lord will be saved. Whosoever will call on the name of the Lord will be forgiven. Whosoever will call on the name of the Lord will be set free. And tonight, as you call, and you say, yes, Lord, I'm here, I believe. I behold I believe, and now I begin the honorable life of grace as I take hold of what Christ has done for me. It will not fail in your life. It will come. The goodness of God, it will come. The salvation of the Lord, it will come. The freedom of the Lord, it will come. The forgiveness from the Lord, it will come. It will come upon your life tonight in Jesus' name. And understand, the moment you say, yes, I behold the Lamb, he died for me. Yes, I behold the Lamb. He gave his life for me. Yes, I behold the goodness of the Lord for me tonight. That very moment, the Lord will give you grace that will lead to glory. Are you there? Where are you? Are you receiving tonight? The salvation of the Lord, are you receiving tonight? The forgiveness of the Lord, are you receiving tonight? And the freedom that he has brought, are you receiving that tonight? I need an answer. The Lord will do it. I said the Lord will do it because it says, The Lord, the God of heaven, the one that never lied, the one that never deceives, the one that brings his grace into every life, the one that is not partial, the one that is blessing everyone without exception. Tonight, tonight, as you desire, and as you decide for the Lord, and say, yes, Lord, that's what I want. That's why I came. I want to have what you have provided. It's coming your way tonight. And then no good thing will be withheld from you. Because the Lord himself manifests his mercy upon your life tonight. Amen. Amen. Another amen. amen. A good, good amen that will reach heaven. Ex bowed and eyes closed. Ex bowed and eyes closed. That grace of God is available to forgive your sin tonight. That grace of God is available to save your soul tonight. That grace of God is here, available for everyone that will call on the name of the Lord. That grace of God that is overflowing and will reach you at the point of need where you are, where you are, is available tonight. And if you want that grace and that salvation and that forgiveness and that freedom and you want that reconciliation and uh, connection with God tonight, wherever you are, just raise up your hand and say, it's not by my work, it's not by my trial, it's not by my self-righteousness, it is by the goodness of God and the grace of God made available for me at 
Calvary through Jesus Christ. Wherever you are, raise up that hand and say, yes, Lord, I'm here. Let him recognize you there. Yes, Lord, I am here. I want that forgiveness. I want him to take away my sin. I want him to take away all the condemnation, all the guilt in my heart. I want him to take away and the consequence of sin and the eternal punishment of sin for sin in my life. I want that now. And the Lord will do it. Where are you? Raise up that hand. If you're raising up your hand, please stand up wherever you are. You stand up and you're saying, yes, it's for me. He died for me. Yes, it's for me. He made the sacrifice for me. I behold him now, the Lamb of God. I behold him now, the one that came to replace me to suffer for me and to make atonement for my sin i behold him now my substitute and my savior wherever you are raise up that hand god bless you there see you there and stand up and say yes i've decided to follow jesus no turning back no turning back. I've decided to receive the grace from Christ. No turning back. No turning back. I've decided to have the forgiveness, the freedom, the salvation of the Lord. No turning back. No turning back. I behold him. I visualize him. He died for me on the cross. I believe him without any shadow of doubt that he has been given for my salvation. Yes, Lord, I believe. And I believe that the grace of God is coming into my life now to begin the honorable life of grace. Stand up wherever you are. If that is your decision tonight, I behold, I believe, I begin the life of grace. I'm praying with you now. Close your eyes and in your mind, in your heart, say, Lord, I turn away from my evil habit of sinfulness and I turn unto you. And I want what Christ did on the cross of Calvary, taking away my sin. I want that at this time of faith, at this time of believing, at this time of relying on you, I want that to be transferred to my account. He did it for me. I believe it. I pray, Lord, it be transferred to my account. I pray for you now, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. And we thank you for the free pardon and for the free salvation that we don't have to pray for, pay for, because Christ paid each all and he paid each all for everyone and I pray that your grace and your mercy, your compassion, your love will be manifested for everyone now in Jesus name let forgiveness come for everyone turning away from their sins and believing on you right now let freedom come let salvation come let the joy of salvation flood every heart believing on the lord right now in jesus name according to your promise write their names in the book of life in heaven and i pray lord it be done right now what the joy of salvation and the victory the peace of salvation coming into every heart now. Confirm it in every life. Confirm it in every heart. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord for what he has done. He said, you so ever shall call on the name of the Lord will be saved and that's what you have done and he cannot fail that salvation is yours right there now our counselors are there and our counselors will you know, interact with you and get the details concerning you so that we'll continue at the time of follow up to be of further help 
unto you. We we'll call and our overseer to lead us at this time of counseling. Nobody should go home now because we have not finished. I'm still coming back to pray for you and healing, miracle, deliverance will come to you tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. If you are happy, let me hear your amen. Welcome to the family you online and you have taken this huge step of faith. You have given your life to Christ. You now have a supernatural freedom. All you have to do right now is to fill the form on your screen. www.gckhq.org forward slash connect. www.gckhq.org forward slash connect. Go on that website right now and fill the form because the man of God would like to follow up with you, like to know more about you, and like to, you know, interact with you. You are now a new creature. You are now somebody with supernatural freedom, a, somebody who is a product of grace. And tonight, we've seen our big daddy, Pastor W.F. Kumi. He has taken us through this series. Today's message has been so great, a substitutionary lamp for supernatural freedom. And we have seen that this lamp has been someone that has come to change you, someone that has come to give you, give you a supernatural freedom. Don't take this for granted. Go on that link that you have seen and fill your form. And for those of us who are already saved, be prepared because the man of God is coming. This man of God, he is an apostle. He is an evangelist, someone sent by God and is ready to inject you with a dose of supernatural freedom. Right now, if you have given your life to Christ already, remember you are filling the form, you are ready to give us your details. And for those who are ready for miracles, this is a night of supernatural freedom, a night of liberty, a night to connect with your maker, whatever problems you are facing, get prepared now be looking at your screen be ready for us because the man of god is coming in some few minutes it will be on your screen right now it will be there to give us a dosage of supernatural freedom and you need to get your mind prepared you need to give your get your heart prepared remember after the final amen there is a supernatural freedom remember after the final amen there is liberty if you are there either you're on facebook you're on youtube you are on telegram you're on instagram you are joining us from twitter this is the time to actually go online this is the time to fill the form right there online in the comfort of your room you are there standing by doing any whatever you are doing all you just have to do is go on www gckhq.org for slash connect to fill the form for those who have given their life to Christ and for those who are waiting on God for healing who are waiting on God for deliverance who are waiting for God for supernatural freedom tonight is the night yesterday here at the Alpha location here in Bori we have seen people who got transformed we have seen some people who got you know baptized some people who stood up People whose legs were not functioning again. People who had insanity. These people, they actually got saved. Tonight is the night of freedom. Tonight is the night of supernatural freedom. Don't forget to work with you. We are ready for you. The biggest daddy, the convener of the Global Crusade with Kumui, Pastor W.F. Kumui is ready to connect with you. Right now, I will leave you with our moderator. I will be back because Biggest Daddy will soon be back to actually launch us into the realm of supernatural freedom. Whether on Facebook, on YouTube, on Telegram, on Instagram, remember, Biggest Daddy is coming. Don't lose the channel. Don't switch it off. Your miracle is on the way. Castellos have not come to you, please wave your hand. Castellos, let's move to the back. Move to the flank, the right, the left flank and right flank. We have a lot of people across the gate. And we have some people around the classroom block. Go there and get their data. Please do that. For those who are just sitting, if I were you, I'll close my eyes. 
and be praying and be talking to God and say, Lord, tonight is my night. Don't pass me by. Tonight is my night. I want to get my own miracle. Tonight is my night. And if they have attended to you, as somebody who has just given his or her life to Christ, please close your eyes and be praying and say, Lord, visit me. I need a double miracle. One, I've got salvation. I also want to get healing. I also want to get deliverance. I want also want to get freedom. I also want to get breakthrough. Talk to God. Cancel us. Let's be fast. Let's be fast. Please, if you gave your life to Christ after the pastor's message and no counselor has come to you, can you wave your hand? They have not attended to you. You have not given your data to them. Please wave your hand anywhere you are. Counselors, identify those who are waving their hand and ensure they are helped. Let's do that quickly. Once they are through with you, then you have your seat and be praying. Talking to God and say, Lord, I've got one. I need more. I've got one. I need more. I've got one. I need more. Look at the challenge I have. And you have assured me that as, as long as I'm now your child, you will not withhold any good thing from me. I made up my mind to walk uprightly. I made up my mind to live for you. I made up my mind to surrender to you. Lord God, fulfill your promise in my life. That should be a prayer. Lay hold on this promise. No good thing with God. Withhold from those that walk uprightly. Uprightly. You have made up your mind. You will remain a child of disobedience. You will remain in sin. You're giving your life to Christ. That's very good. Cancel us. If you are true, please indicate. We are waiting for you. Online, check your link. Click on the link. A form will drop. Fill the form and submit. And if you listen via radio or television, type a short SMS and send to the number I mentioned before. Or send a WhatsApp message indicating your name, your telephone number, and the location or address where you are will reach out to you. And all the converts, those who gave your love to Christ today, because of the love the man of God had for you, and he wants you to grow, tomorrow there will be a lunch hour with Jesus here for you at 3 p.m. Don't miss it. Please come. The Lord will be waiting for you to bless your soul. Cancel us, please. Indicate if you are true. If cancel us are true with you, close your eyes. Be talking to God. Praying. Asking God for supernatural miracle tonight. You will get yours. Nobody should leave. Because the man of God said, he's coming to pray for you. Don't be in a hurry to go. We have vehicles to take you home. And your package of miracle is here. God has equipped the man of God. God has empowered the man of God to be a blessing to you. 
and he has assured you he's coming back to pray for you for supernatural miracle, supernatural freedom. Don't go. You are getting your miracle tonight. Also, the only online the audience, don't go out. Don't shut down. Stay tuned. Those listening via radio or television, stay tuned. The man of God is also going to pray for you. And no matter the location where you are now, in America, in Europe, in Asia, in Ghana, anywhere, South Africa, Australia, stay tuned. The man of God is coming with global power for global miracle. Tonight is a special night. God has given him a message. And God has given him what to give to you. Wherever you are, stay tuned. The man of God is coming shortly to pray. This night will be an unforgettable night in your life. Counselors, we are still waiting for you. If you are true, please signify. If they have attended to you, be praying. Let the tempo of your prayer be rising now. Because very soon, the power of God will be released. The anointing will be released. The man of God will deliver what God has given to him. He will release the prayer that carries anointing and miracle. Let your, the tempo of your prayer be rising now. Be full of expectation. This night is your night. Counselors, we are waiting for you. If you are true, please signify. Online audience, get ready. This night is your night of miracle. Those listening via radio and television, get ready. This night is your night. In any location where you are, northern part of Nigeria, eastern part of Nigeria, western part of Nigeria, even southern part of Nigeria, then, Africa, Europe, Asia, America, Australia, anywhere you are, the power of God will soon meet you there. Be praying, looking unto God. Cancel us, we are still waiting for you. Make sure all the converts are reached. I'm waiting for your signal. Cancel us. If you are true, please signal. To my right, if you are true, can I get the signal? Center here. Can I get the signal? Cancel us. To my left, if you are true, can I get the signal? Thank you, counselors. You are doing a thorough job. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. No soul that has decided for the Lord should be left unattended to. Thank you for the good job you are doing. The Lord will renew your strength. Cancel us, if you are true, signic, give me a signal. I'm waiting for your signal, cancel us. No cancel us should be sitting now. If you are true, with the cluster they gave to you, go to the next cluster. We have a lot of souls 
to be helped. Those are the far back. Let them be helped. The language section. Let the counselors also reach there and assist them. Those across the fence, those by the classroom block should be reached. And once you are through, give me the signal. Cancellors, I'm waiting for your signal. Please, if the cancellors have not come to you and you gave your life to Christ, can you stand and wave your hand? They've not reached you, they've not attended to you. Stand and wave your hand. Stand and wave your hand. Castellos, please watch out. I'm pleading with you. If they have not come to you, please stand and wave your hand. And say, I am for Jesus. I am for Jesus. I've given my life to Jesus. And the counselors will come to you and attend to you. Castellos, please, let's move to where... They are raising their hands and help them out. Let's do that quickly. Let's do that, do that quickly. Counselors, remember, write legibly. In capital letters. If you don't know how to spell their name, ask them questions. If you don't know how to spell the address, ask them questions. Write what can be used. And check the phone number. Make sure it has 11 digits. Perhaps you just joined now, or you didn't hear when we gave the announcement, and you are online listening, and you gave your life to Christ. Check your screen. There is a link there. Click on it. A form will drop. Fill the form and submit. And if you listen via radio or television, please send SMS or WhatsApp message to plus 234-915-444-9263. We are waiting for you. If the counselors have attended to you, please close your eyes, open your mouth, and pray. The man of God is already here. Can we be on our feet? Our Father and the Lord is here. Be on your field. It's time to receive. It's time to receive. It's time to receive. Praise the Lord. Uh uh, where are you? I said, Praise the Lord! Your time has come. Your miracle has arrived. I believe the Lord will confirm that faith in Jesus' name. Remember, He heals, He sets free, He delivers, He manifests power. For everyone. And Christ has paid for your healing, for your deliverance, and for your miracle. And that miracle is yours right now. 
You raise up your hand if you have any health challenge, any sickness, any disease here on the grounds, over there on the television, over there on the radio, over there online, anywhere you are, any congregation you are, that mighty power of God is coming to you now. It's no need for other people. He'll do it for you. Blind eyes will open. The lame will rise up and walk. That swelling will vanish away. And that so-called incurable disease, the Lord is touching you now with his miracle power. And he'll heal that incurable disease in Jesus' name. Calvary will not fail in your life. The sacrifice of Christ will not fail in your life. What he has done and what he has served for you, nothing will block it away from you in Jesus' name. Lay your hand where you have the challenge. Raise up the other hand and know in your heart at the end of the prayer or the final amen heaven will confirm the miracle amen. father in the mighty name of jesus we call upon you now you will not deny the faith of the people that are waiting to receive the miracle now lord i pray everyone Expecting their healing, expecting their miracle, expecting the deliverance. Lord, grant unto them now in Jesus' name. Manifest your power from the top of the head to the tip of the toe. Any part of the body having any sickness, any ailment, any affliction, any infirmity, touch and heal them now in Jesus name yeah. cancer I command be healed in Jesus name yeah. any incurable disease I command you now be healed in Jesus name yeah. any wound internal wound or blood uh, issue I pray Lord everything will receive a definite touch of miracle now in Jesus name yeah. Lord, I pray that long-standing illnesses and long-standing diseases will receive the miracle and the healing and the recovery right now in Jesus' name. That demonic power there, demonic affliction there, tormenting life, harassing life, Lord, I pray that demon will come out now in Jesus' name. I'm asking, Lord, that the people that have blind eyes, touch their eyes right now. The blindness, I command you, be healed in Jesus' name. Deaf ears, be healed in Jesus' name. Dumb tongues, speak out in Jesus' name. General weakness of the body, I pray that the pain and the weakness, everything that is uh, tormenting their lives, manifest your power now. Take it away in Jesus' name. Here at the Alpha location, right, left, center, at the back, uh, beyond the fence, Lord, miracle, power, performance, now in Jesus' name. Online, uh, everywhere, all the congregation where people are looking up to you now, and they're touching you by faith, heal them in Jesus' name. <laughs> Miracles everywhere. Deliverances everywhere. Healing everywhere. Freedom everywhere. Lord, I believe. They believe. We all believe. Perform your wonders in every life now. Thank you, Lord. We know you've done it. We have it in our possession. We'll see it in the testimonies that we give. Confirm that miracle power in every life. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. 
Amen. You have got your miracle. You check up on yourself now and you do what you couldn't do before. That miracle power, that healing, that deliverance is right there. Check up. You have a testimony. Check up. You have.